You're good to go? Excellent. So hello, everybody. Welcome to the Talk to Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle C. Baker. And uh, before we, I introduce you my, uh, to my guests, uh, make sure to like, follow, or subscribe to the channel you're watching or listening to. And uh, today I have a uh, really, really special guest on his, uh, I call him my black card books brother. He's like a brother to me. We, we've gone through this journey together in uh, trying to write our books. And his book just came out, so I'm really excited to have him on. I'm going to introduce you to Vincent Chang. Thank you so much for joining me today, Vincent. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, Danielle. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, you're definitely my sister here on this journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about how it all started and even before yeah. that. Uh, so excited. Thank you. That's yeah, and as we just before we started recording, uh, we were talking about that 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 first journey when we first started, and how far that those two years seems like it's so long ago. But before we get into that, let's talk about you. You have an incredible life, and that's what I always fascinated me because uh, you were an engineer, and then you you were an international conductor conducting orchestras, and then you went into psychotherapy. Now you're this this amazing entrepreneur. So you've got quite the uh, the span of uh, of experience. There. So can you tell us a little bit about your story about your journey? I think it all starts when when I was a kid, um, and the feeling that you I got was I got bored very quickly with a lot of things and at, at the beginning it was seen as something negative mm -hmm. you know you never you never stick to something you never but as I look back it's because I was able to get to a level with something that in a short amount of time that most people might, might take longer whether mm -hmm. it be academics or sports or video games or whatever it is yeah. um, that I got to that point where I'm done. It's, 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 it's good. Like, let's go to the next thing. And mm -hmm. now reflecting back that, that was a, a superpower of mine. And I know you work with children and educating and, yeah. and this new way of, you know, connecting of learning that I wish I had that because it was seen as, Oh, you're, you're too smart. You're too fast. You're too good. You're too whatever. And mm -hmm. this comparison between yeah. you and someone else creates this there's something wrong with me if I'm different if I'm not the same and the, the all 100 people 100 kids are like this but I'm like this that means mm -hmm. something's wrong and that sort of kept me to a, a place where I, 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 I stopped growing I, I, I recluded you know I was just like being alone so mm -hmm. this journey to become the engineer and to started as okay this is the 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 right place you should go get a stable career go to school and get a job and get a family get a house get a horror you know all that stuff and the minute I think I stepped into university at that first semester this wave of I don't know call it depression came on I'm like what yeah. the hell am I doing here <laughs> I am like going to I I just didn't enjoy anything at all and but then I, I have to it's like almost you you get to this point of we're conditioned that you have to do something you should do something you have to follow the rules and I realized if I'm reflecting on my life like no I broke the rules always I'm always bending your rules in fact you know my 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 seventh grade uh I loved his this teacher, Mr. Kara. Like he bent the rules to accommodate me and another kid in class. Mm -hmm. Like he said, here's all the math homework for your entire grade seven. And he gives it to mm -hmm. us the first day. He's like, you can finish it or you can do it with us each week. Uh, and I think yeah. I, I finished the whole year's worth of homework in like two weeks or a week I'm like every day I'm just go 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 and I'm, like, I'm done and he's like great okay you've joined the grade eight math class starting today so yeah. I was already but he offered that opportunity and that space and somebody else did that last year um so 
this sort of the rules, this we'll get into that. I think once you step back and you say, who sets these rules? Like who tells us what the right path or the right life or the right way to live is or are? Like, no. So when I saw that, I, I said, you know what? I have a choice. If I'm suffering, I'm depressed <laughs> at you know doing it. And yeah. I, I have I still have five years. Oh my gosh, I just started. <laughs> yeah what do i do okay you know what i'm gonna make the best of it and i think that's yeah. one of my my traits like even though i was very very upset and angry frustrated i always found a way to make the most of fun or happiness <laughs> whether you know it's it's you know reading a ton of books and playing games like i would always be like excited and so that was sort of my mechanism of, of coping, you know, despite, you know, getting bullied at school, not even by students, by teachers. Okay. <laughs> it's like, that's another level. Like yeah. It, yeah. Oh, you know, like a teacher. And I heard from other teachers, oh, this teacher's jealous of you. I'm eight years old. Come on. <laughs> right? Exactly. So yeah. I was like, you know what? That was me disconnecting from all of that mess. I'm like, you know, what? I'm just going to have fun. As much as I can, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So in university, I joined every club. You know, I joined the drama club. I started going into the arts. I'm like, I played the piano for the first time seriously in my entire life. So I'm going to play that. Oh, here's a here's a piano studio. Nobody, oh, you know what? Let me just play. And every weekend, because I was at Waterloo, um, so every weekend I would go back out because I would have to play the the organ at the churches and the, and yeah. uh, you know what I'm gonna learn this piece I've never learned before so I brought it I brought pieces back and I would spend hours playing the piano hours playing basketball <laughs> short of clubs I could tell you uh, <laughs> I think I said this a few times before I could count the number of classes I actually went to in my whole career at engineering wow which is i i i i i, I skipped most of them i didn't go to any of them uh and it's a miracle i made it out alive <laughs> <laughs> but there was i don't know like you know that there's just something about this structure this like you know go yeah. to lectures and and i saw through that very early on i'm like well if this is the formula, okay. So I literally like took a textbook and I put it in a blender, mixed it with some sugar and water and then drank it and then puked it out at the exam and hope for the yeah. best, <laughs> right? Yeah. And most of the time, 95% of the time it got me through. What yeah. is that? Like, what is yeah. that? Um, yeah. So, so that began this already, this, this, this calling of, you know, something's off here. And by me taking the time to explore what I love to do, what was fun, the arts, you know, acting, expression, creativity, it, yeah. it's paved the way then on to make the choice after only, I think I was working like seven years in the engineering industry after I graduated. Mm -hmm. Oh, not to mention that all my electives, which were very few, because you were forced to take certain electives as an engineer, <laughs> uh, I used them all to either do a music course, which I can tell you the only course that I really learned something from in my five years, which was soundtracks and film. I love movies and I love music. That's one elective and the rest were psychology. <laughs> So at that time, I was fascinated with the why. Why do we think this way? Why do I feel this way? Why do people behave this way? Why am I not having yeah. a relationship where everybody does this? Why am I shy? Why am I well, all of this? And so those, the seeds were sown through mm -hmm. the resistance or through the just like darkness of doing something I didn't want to do or I did it for whatever reason that I had no idea. It was not my reason, yeah. truly. Yeah. So that's, that began 
the psychotherapy journey already that began the music journey but even before that you know I, I grew up playing the piano and but it was never seen as something I would do professionally it was you know you you take karate lessons you take swimming lessons you take well growing up Asian I took basket weaving pony riding lesson like you're gonna take everything <laughs> that <laughs> under the sun there was no weekends right? right and I think I I really was now you've seen maybe some of my videos I love car racing yeah mom why did you take me car racing lessons come on <laughs> seriously <laughs> so there there's there's so much there that that we get exposed to um mm -hmm. But if you look at what is the reason for it, maybe to be more diverse, to, to have certain abilities, which is great. Uh, but truly, I feel like I want to be exposed to something because I love to do it or I have this interest. And often this interest is placed on you, like mm -hmm. do this or swim. Or do like you, you don't, we don't know the why. We really yeah. don't know the why as kids. And that's where I first dis had the opportunity to discover my why. Why am I doing this? What is this for? And I think, you know, that is the question that we can ask ourselves a lot more and really deeply reflect. You know, I remember on our, our, our beginning, our, our, our boot camps, you know, yeah. with, with Jerry leading, like one of the most impactful parts with it was this six step question of why is this important to you? Mm -hmm. And you don't ask it once, you ask it six times to go deeper, yeah. why is it important? To, and then you get to this place of real depth of emotion, like, oh, because I don't want to feel that I'm not worthy of any value or respect mm -hmm. or like you get to that deep place rather than, oh, it's to make a good living, it's to, you know, no, it's something that people like, or no, no. Coming to that deep place of the why at, at, at your core sort of exposed vulnerable self, mm -hmm. that's the key. And, and each time I've, I made a huge shift as if I made an entire life change was because I asked that why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's incredible. It gives you, uh, and I honestly, you touched so much on this growing up, you're kind of given a why and you don't know why <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't resonate with you. And I don't know anybody who said from little, you know, from younger age saying, yeah, that's what I wanted to do from day one. You know, it was just, it's kind of imposed. And then I love that you said that that first semester going in and you were already in a dark place because I've been through it too. And I was trying to explain it to people back in the day, you didn't even talk about that. Um, and it was just like, but what do you got to complain about? You're in a good school, you're in an Ivy League, you know, you're in a good program, you've got honors, you've got this, this, what, you, and it was the same later on with my job. I was miserable at my job. I loved what I did, but for some reason I was miserable there. And I was like, well, but you're making a good living. You've got, you know, you're getting a pension, you have a health care, you have this. It was always that, but what do you, what, I felt like I was ungrateful for what I had and it, it just didn't see it. We need to teach this to our children so that they know when it doesn't feel right before they make themselves sick over it and, uh, you know, and, and be miserable their entire life. So I love that you mentioned that and that that step that not going to the surface, because those first answers of the why is always this what we've been programmed to think it's well, I have to make a living. I want to retire at a certain age. I want my children to have a good future. You know, you, you go down and all of a sudden you're going, okay, well, I want to make a contribution. Oh, okay, now we're we're getting deeper, at, you know, moving down. So I think that's amazing. And, um, obviously with all the changes that you've done and you're, we were talking earlier before we started recording that there's, there's still some more changes to come, but um, can, can you talk to me a little bit about some of the habits that you've worked how we're programmed our mindsets we have to let some of those old beliefs go 
to be able to move on to the next level of growth. Uh, can, you, can you talk a little bit about going through engineering, conducting all of that and, and what, where you're at now, some of the, the mindset, the habits that were really challenging to let go of, kind of almost afraid to let it go? Absolutely. The, you know, bringing in a lot of my psychotherapy studying and, 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 and work, you know, the, the whole concept is to bring what's unconscious, what we're not aware of conscious so that we're aware, because if we're not aware of it, we don't have any power over it. We don't know what's happening. We don't know. So even if something is off, if we don't know what to do with it, we, you know, we're just lost. So having that ability to look back at how our unconscious habits have formed to keep us usually avoiding pain. So yes. some of the habits I've developed, well, I, I don't want to feel ashamed or upset or, or depressed about my situation or even how I look, you know, how I feel and so what do I do? Well, I don't want to feel it. And I talk about this in you know, the basic concepts. Most people do, but it's in, in my book, you know, Heal the Source, yeah. where the don't want mindset. Well, I don't want to feel criticized or judged. I don't want to feel rejected. I don't want, don't want. So I don't want to feel that way. So what do I do? Let's do things that won't get me to feel that. So let's pour myself into more, you know, feeling dopamine things, whether, mm -hmm. you know, partying, like, like drinking, or let's go to uh, video games. Like that's why, you know, a lot of kids play that because it's, it's a, a way, it's an easy way. It's what they mm -hmm. know. Like if I, if I go here, then I don't have to experience this. So it's a don't want. You know? yeah. And unconsciously that is perpetuating a cycle that will keep you in that state because you're just only avoiding it for a time until you have to do it again until you have to do it again and for me that that was one of the habits i have to be more aware of by exploring what it is i'm truly not wanting mm -hmm. and once i'm able to face it to embrace it wow you know a lot of my life i just felt like i'm nothing i'm useless i'm disgusting mm -hmm. and once i'm able to honor that truth and connect to that part of me that needed something in that place. Now I don't have to avoid this don't want mm -hmm. because I've, there's nothing to avoid because if I'm truly loving this part of me that's rejected, well, now I'm no longer rejected. So yeah. there's no, so that is a habit that that's formed and it's part of my, my, the heal the source method that if I've, I've seen for myself and with people that I help, that's you get to the source of what you really do want. But first we have to look at what the source of what you didn't want. And it's not, I don't want this job. Like <laughs> it's much deeper than that. Right. <laughs> like if it's just a job, you could just leave. Yeah. But the job is attached to your identity. It's attached to your worth. It is attached to expectations of belonging and all these other things. And once we get to that source, now you have power. Now you have choice. It's like, ah, if I only want to avoid from this surface, you know, these yeah. decisions and paths. No, if I'm here, now I'm offered maybe two choices. Either I reject myself or I accept myself. And that is that true surrender, surrendering to all these constructs that we call it the little ego, right? Mm -hmm. That there's just like, oh, you're, you're just not defined, but we're trying to fit in to this mold so that we don't disintegrate psychologically. Uh, so right. if you look at every time I've made a huge decision to completely change my life, that in a sense is me dying psychologically to mm -hmm. who I am. And, and it's, it's not the same as, you know, you would tell, oh, it's dying. Like suicide is a very different concept in a construct. It's actually, I don't want mm -hmm. in, in the deepest sense. I don't want to live this life. I don't have any other choices, but this true surrender, if you look at a lot of spiritual leaders, you know, whether, you know, 
Buddha or Jesus, or they <laughs> truly surrendered to that sense of self, which gave them ultimate essence of their true self. And I think that's the journey. Like once you start listening and getting, you're able to get to that true sense of who you are. Okay. Then you begin to operate in that place versus this matrix we're plugged in. You got to do this, do this, do this. And, and I don't know if you've seen it. Now, most people have that mm -hmm. when he awoke and he realized that it was all uh, made up an illusion and he couldn't accept it. So this yeah. is a whole journey of you balancing, understanding your mind, your body and your spirit and getting mm -hmm. to that place of, can you make that choice? Because deep down, once you start listening, uh, that's why I do a lot of meditation, exploring self-discovery, reading tons of books. It's like, there's a call. There has been a call. You know this. It's like, yeah. you've got to do this. And you're like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to give it up. <laughs> what will people think? Uh, I spent that's all right. this time doing this. Like, but once you do it, once I decided to leave my job, it was like, I had mm -hmm. to do it. And I was given a miracle of another life because I closed that door. And so as time went on, it, you know, took me, I don't know, seven years to do that. Then mm -hmm. the next, it took me five. And the next, it took me three. And now it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, you just get better and better at living a completely different way. So it, it's having someone to explore some of these blocks with will help you see what yeah. habits are not serving you and to, to create new habits that do serve you yeah it's it's it, so powerful and you really do need that help because that's one thing that i was stubborn on was i'll do this on my own you know like i'm fine <laughs> but that infamous i'm fine and <laughs> to have somebody you're sometimes you're just so caught up in that programming that you had that you don't even see what you're doing you don't actually see that it's second nature you just automatically fall into that that habit so when you have somebody call you out on it it really shakes the cage a little bit <laughs> and then you just and then you, it's, it's that decision okay I'm, I'm not comfortable here I gotta move but uh, it's it's not easy you mentioned uh, your book because you have a method that is heal the source and you also people mm -hmm. that work with you and you have retreats and all of that um, you talk a lot about um, having those that that long lasting fulfillment to reach that where you get to the source of what you don't want and change it into what you actually do want um can you give us a little bit of some of the small steps people can take today to get to that long lasting fulfillment i think the the first step is to really acknowledge with honesty of where you're at that really asking where am i at? what am i truly feeling with no filter mm -hmm. and to even say to yourself or it's even with with someone else that can guide you and, and hold space for that because often we don't want to say those things we don't even want to admit it it's so painful we're conditioned that way avoid pain shame sadness frustration fear and mm -hmm. only seek pleasure so, but when we do that unconsciously, we're, what we're doing is we're rejecting who we are. So if I'm upset and I tell you I'm fine, there's an incongruency. I'm in conflict with myself. I'm not fine. I'm sad, <laughs> but I tell you I'm fine. <laughs> so what's really happening to yourself? You're like, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're positive and negative at the same time. You don't know what's going on. And, and this inner conflict, I think, drives most of our illnesses. It can manifest from that psychological level, mental level, emotional to physical. And I've seen it. You've probably yeah. seen it too. It's like, yeah. well, I, I'm fine, but why am I? I can't get up in the morning. I'm sick. My back hurts. I'm feeling all this pain. And mm -hmm. it's like, we're manifesting this inner turmoil by saying, I'm not acknowledging where we're actually at. So that present moment, but that is not easy to do. We're, we're not able to say, hey, 
I'm just completely overwhelmed. I am so terrified. Uh, I don't know if I can make my next meal. And I mm -hmm. just feel so ashamed of that. And you enter in that space, you're like, who can you tell that to? Exactly. And imagine you do that, right? It's like, what? And why can't we say that? Well, that's the source of the don't want. Mm -hmm. Well, what am I fearing if I say that? Judgment, criticism. Ultimately, in, in the book, I, I, I condense. I've, I've been able to find the formula, sort of. Like, there's only one fear, really. Mm -hmm. The fear of non-existence. And we cease to exist when we are rejected, when we mm -hmm. feel rejected by other. And if that's the worst form of fear, let's find all different ways to stop that from happening. I will sacrifice who I am to, to be liked. I will stay here and do this and uh, bend over backwards and, you know, dive myself into other things that, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, so that I don't get rejected. But in a sense, we don't realize the self-rejection is the worst of all. And it's happening. The yeah. minute I say I'm fine when I'm sad, I've rejected me mm -hmm. in the sadness. But we're not aware of that. So that's part of the process. I, if, if I get someone to be aware of that, wow, I'm actually rejected. Mm -hmm. And we see how often we say no to ourselves. And that's the first yeah. chapter. Saying that's yes amazing. to you. Like, how often do we say yes to us? We'll feel Hardly. guilty, selfish, judge. You know? Like, you no. if someone else is sad and you're happy, somehow you feel like you don't deserve to be happy because someone right. else is sad. And it's like, I think that's the construct of the separation, which is underneath I don't want. Mm -hmm. If I'm happy, I don't want you to feel more upset about me. Yeah. So it has yeah. nothing to do with them. It's all but, about how you feel. And the yeah. more you can do that reflection, the more power and mastery you have over your own emotional state. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really it. Can we ask ourselves truly where we're at, honestly, truthfully? And the more we can do that, this is where I'm at. Now we can begin the process of acceptance. So we're going to choose not to reject ourselves. We're going to choose to accept. Why? How do we do that? Well, we need a model. We need someone to teach us how to do that. So what I do as a therapist or even the coach is I'm going to accept you no matter what. I'm going to invite you to accept yourself no matter what, despite all the fear, terror, judgment. And then you're in that space of called complete vulnerability. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it's so difficult. And the more you expose yourself to it, you're still accepted. You begin to trust that you can be in it without escaping it, without rejecting yourself in it. And so this whole process is about acceptance. And mm -hmm. that's really all we want. You know, we, we don't understand the concept, like the feeling of it. It's like everybody wants to be loved and wants to be, you know, loving someone else. But what does that really mean? No, but if I say everybody wants to avoid feeling rejected, you can click it yeah. so much easier. So from that space, we have to guide to exposing ourselves to be accepted. That is a completely scary place because we have to expose the part of us we want to reject. And it's a paradox, really. So you're like, yeah, oh, I can be, I can be. We build that trust. And once you can, now you feel like you can be loved no matter what versus I'm going to expect rejection. You know, yeah. I'm going to be decimated by that's the fear of non-existence. If you reject me, I don't exist in your eyes. Mm -hmm. But we've been conditioned to build our own identity based on how we feel about someone else feeling about us. So it's this meta thinking, almost meta yeah. identity. So we lose ourselves because we think the other person has defined us. Mm -hmm. 
even if I say you are the most worthless entrepreneur of all time, mm -hmm. you're like, what, 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 why? Do, what? So your body, your unconscious is already reacting to it because a part of you has believed it. We're just conditioned yeah. to believe others. We're, we're, we're that, you know, beings that depend, but this is about you, de you de creating your own definition. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What are you? So I think having that boundary, and that's the, that's the training too, boundarying other people's beliefs about you <laughs> versus already defending against it and yeah, sorry. You know, reacting or against trying, it. And, or trying to prove them wrong and trying to prove that you're worthy of their attention. And yeah, I think that's a, it's a good, uh, and then you kind of said it too, because people will say, well, how do I do that? How do I know if I'm, you know, I'm right? And you said it, your body, you physically react to it. You just either get that shock of somebody says something and you're just physically already all tensed up and the heartbeat. So pay attention to what your body is telling you. And, and that's how you'll know where to where to focus. So that's uh, how would you, because I work with children. So obviously I'm always saying we need to teach children about this early on. That's And it's so important. It's part of the development at a certain age when they're in this, the primary uh, school age where they seek validation from their peers. They move away from wanting to be, they wanting to please the adults and now they want to please their, their friends. Uh, so that's all about being accepted and it's all, <laughs> that's part of the development. How do you, um, how would you say you could, kind of teach children to to take notice of that 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 acceptance and that uh, what what would what are your thoughts on it i'm kind of curious to know oh yeah that's a uh, that's a great great question because mm. a lot of the times you know we don't learn by being talked to we don't <laughs> learn by you know you read a book mm. and you know we're learning unconsciously our superpower is unconscious they're like I just heard like we have what, the universe in our mind. We have infinite yeah. amount of, you know, ex, you know, storage. We learn through the modeling of others that the feeling that's created, the bond. And so if we want to teach, we first have to be the example. Yeah. So what is the example we want to do? So if I'm feeling rejected, if I'm feeling not accepted, what is happening? I'm feeling ashamed. I'm feeling uh, alone and all of these things. Are we, for our kids, able to tolerate that feeling? How do we process it in ourselves? And us doing it in their presence creates the learning. So right. you almost, the best way to teach is nonverbal. The more you start to talk, talking, I, my, one of my other mentors says, talking is the most primitive form of communication. <laughs> like, just, just don't. Even as a conductor, like, yeah. my, one of my teachers is like, talk, don't talk, show, don't talk, show, show. <laughs> and we show with our energy, with our feeling. Let's say I'm in the grocery store with my child and someone comes up so mean and says, ah, you did this, you, you, you dropped this off uh, and, and, and you, you pushed me and you did not. And then some other reactions might be, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything. What are you, yeah, because I'm now yeah. feeling stupid. I'm feeling like I did something wrong. But before I do that, I'm able to understand that I'm being triggered to a state yeah. of insecurity or whatever. It's bringing up beliefs about me based on this person. Wait, I'm not, okay. Hey, I get that you're upset. Now I'm, I'm remaining in my have state. So I talk about yeah. the lack state and the have state. The moment I'm triggered, I'm in lack. I need to, <clears throat> something, something's missing. I'm like, it's like, hey, tell me what's going on. Like, how can I help you? Are, are you really upset? Okay, I feel like you did this. Um, no, I, I was here. Like, mm -hmm. so you see how I've been able to boundary their reaction with, with mine. Like, I don't yeah. lose me. And now a child observing me, like, that's, that's different. Like, okay, that's how we can teach. And, and I think teachers and parents, uh, more so than, 
oh, you don't say this like this to someone else, or you can't do that. And the, they have no idea what you're talking about. Exactly. Because and they go they and see, see you like punch someone else, <laughs> right? When you're triggered, right? Like that's what that's they see. Right. That's what they're going to learn. Uh, yeah. I, I call it the window of tolerance. We learn about this. The more we're able to tolerate this uncomfortable feeling of the trigger, yeah. create space. Now we have choice. So if mm -hmm. we are able to do that in the energy, we have choice. Now a child sees, I have choice. Hmm. What can I choose here? Oh, I've seen people choose this. I've seen people choose this. What is the result? Oh, at the end of the day, now, after that incident, we go to the car and we go home. We have a beautiful day and we enjoy it. Yeah. Or the cops are called and now I'm the <laughs> thing. And we go back and I'm just swearing nonstop about this person. And guess what the child's going to hear? Yeah. yeah. So that that form of teaching where we want to be like, I would expose more that we teach so much based on how we act and how we feel and how we speak based on our day-to-day -day versus what specifically we want to teach them. When we're trying to teach a lesson. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I like that you said that too, because children speak a hundred languages, but there's only one that's spoken. Everything else is nonverbal. So they catch on. We, as adults, we lose that. And we only focus on the, the verbal, the, the words that are coming out of our mouth, but children pick up on everything else so even if you're trying to calm down in a situation like you said somebody comes and confronts you your non-verbal will speak as well so that the children will know okay so they're they're saying something but their body's saying something completely different and they pick up on that as well so uh no it's it's good i like that it's, it's how, what you do that teaches the children it's not what you say and uh, that, that can trigger a lot of adults because they're thinking, well, this guy cut me off. Like, I have to react. That's just how I am. But, yeah, okay, well, then you got to have to live with the fact that that's what your child is going to do. <laughs> that's how they're going to react. And to add to it even is um, in that situation where the like, cops are called or anything, they're going to even think, well, what could I, I – I couldn't do anything to stop it, so I must be horrible because now – my, you know, mommy or daddy are in trouble and I couldn't stop it. So we are adding on to that and that's another topic, but yeah, it's, it, we gotta start early so that it's easier for them uh, to be able to make those changes later on in, the, in their adult life. Uh, when, um, I wanna talk about your book, but, and, and I'm saying, I could talk, I said this before, I could talk to you all day, but before, <laughs> before, we, talk, I mean, <laughs> before we talk about the book, can you kind of explain, okay, first, let's go personal. How do you find balance in between work, family, uh, you know, starting new businesses, starting new programs, starting uh, writing a book, all of that? How do you personally find the balance between all of that? That has been one of the biggest challenges. And mm -hmm. especially recently with, with the new entrepreneur, building a business, writing the book and and I, of course, still have my full-time therapy practice and the music mm -hmm. and that there's a lot of adjustment. And especially with the pandemic that happened, we were mm -hmm. forced to change and adjust drastically, like day and night, boom, you know, can't do this, and go with this. And uh, to really take the time to honor the change. I call it every time we have change, we're grieving, we're grieving a loss or an old part of us and stepping into the new. And when we're not able to do that, the unconscious habit that comes in is force it and, you know, get into this new space, you're expected. And I found myself working all day, you know, filling up my hours, even though I enjoyed it, you get to see that the signs of your body is like, okay, you're reaching a limit. It's to know what your limits are and to be kind to yourself when you're setting them. It's okay to have drives and goals and, and reach them. And yes, uh, but we are our harshest critics. You know, we, we set these most of the time impossible <laughs> bars. <laughs> like yes. do this, you know, like no. Yes. And I'm driving through it every day and then I'm neglecting. Now, 
it's going to show up with irritation. And, and I think that the biggest, uh, the next book is all about time, mm -hmm. how we relate to time. Once you start to have an expression of anger or frustration or sadness that I don't have enough time, I never have enough time, um, where it'd be my relationship. I'm like, you know, I get so upset that when I do have that hour, like she's late, she's on her phone. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, like, ah. I'm like, hold on a second. Okay. Is it, is it there? It's a short time. And oh, I needed to really honor that time. So I had to do, I worked with another therapist of how do I manage my time by really analyzing here, I think I'm spending five hours and I'm taking a two hour break. But in those five hours, I have a really energetic coaching call. I have three deep, intense clients of therapy. Plus I have, you know, this other seminar that I did. Well, each of these have a different way of reacting or, or engaging with it in terms of energy or emotional, yeah. whatever. And in my mind, I said, it's five hours. Okay. I have to do five hours, but in essence, it feels like it's 12 on my body. So I need to say, okay, wait a second. I can't do these all at the same time. I have to do this. I have to do this. So gathering data for yourself by doing the self-reflection, self-evaluation. I have a schedule there. I write in, I put the numbers of like, oh, okay. And now I, I look at my schedule most of the time each week and I'm like, okay, because I allow clients to book ahead of time on my yeah. calendar. I'm like, yeah, usually if I don't put a lunch time, if I don't mm -hmm. put a travel time, it's, and yeah. it happened, like I would go days, 10 hours straight or nine hours straight. And I didn't yeah. think anything was up with that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but looking true. at it now, that's absurd, right? That's, yeah. that, why would I put myself through that? And again, self-rejection. I'm not saying yes to me. I need yeah. a, a vacation. I need time. I need this time off. I need lunch. It's important to me. And so asking those questions and, and at the end of the day, you get to decide that you can't get it wrong. It's your life. It's your schedule. Mm -hmm. But yeah. all, we often don't realize we're setting an impossible prison of a schedule for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly saying no to who we are <laughs> to fulfill something yeah like yeah i was caught into that like oh i need to make a million dollars so what if i made a million dollars i'm not happy <laughs> yeah yeah true you know, we don't tie that together because we 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 attach ourselves to the goals and we then form our identities to those goals and then we don't achieve it and now we say we're nothing because we don't achieve it all unconscious beliefs that are created so let's yeah. be more conscious. How do I want? I want to enjoy. I want to have an easy life. I want to be happy. I want to have fulfillment purpose. What does that mean? Okay. Does it mean, you know, trying to save the world 24 hours a day? No, I create yeah. that. So yeah, okay. be, be aware yeah. of what you want to create and, and yeah. how you want to live. It's okay. You get to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and it will change. So sometimes, like you said, it's it's still sometimes it can be a struggle because you find something that works, and then there's some changes, and then you have to readjust. So you need to keep you need to keep uh, track of how you're reacting. And I like that. I like that you said that. Um, so let's talk about what's coming up for you. What's what's new? What's exciting? What's uh, let, let's drive. Let's go right into it. Yeah, something really exciting. Now that the book is out, uh, like. You know, go to go to heal the you can you know you know mm -hmm. download the first three chapters and 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 you know even connect with me if you would like that it's it's another chapter of my life it's like wow it's huge and you know often we get to these goals and we're like okay i think i've done something or i want to do something more but again it's like that the next door is about to open and sometimes we gotta close some doors Mm -hmm. you know, that we got to really do some reflection. Okay, uh, what's next? What, what's, what's going to best serve the next phase of my life mission? Mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes our little ego says, 
no, that's not right. Stay here, do this, and this is what you need. And uh, but if we look, I look back and like, no, all all those times when I truly honored that voice of you got to step into it and it's okay. And it's it's liberating, it's scary, but it's also <laughs> exciting. And like you're it, you know, they people call it the dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. like where you're forced to really look within and say what is the meaning of your life yeah. because we can reach a goal and that's it every time you reach a goal that's it now you're mm -hmm. in limbo i need that's another right. goal i need another like, thing now what? yeah <laughs> so instead of going back to my old habits of just finding that other thing and going at it or just you know hamster wheeling and whatever i have Let's take a step back and be nothing. Can I do that? What's going to happen to me? Oh, no, I'm scared of that because I'm not productive. I'm not this. I can't do this. And so, again, it's applying this work onto myself. And <clears throat> yeah, and, and really recognizing there are phases. Like right now, I'm seeking more support and help because I need it. And then there are times where like, you know what? I, I, I got this everything's great um, and call it the beginner's mind you know the, the the state of humility actually my my middle name is humility oh yeah no really not. and yeah That's the cool. Chinese word so it's when you're most humble that's when you're most free like our ego comes in and says this this is like when I truly surrender to it what am I with nothing what am I with am I zero and oh you're just you okay like what am i i'm an engineer i'm a therapist i'm a conductor i'm a you know whatever author those are what's yeah who is a completely different question and a, oh, and it's a question like you'll probably never truly answer but it's the yeah. drive it's the process it's the journey of asking that that's where i'm at now like who am i like i've done all of these things and when you start to ask that, you begin to see you're going to go deeper with your fulfillment, yeah. which is really connecting deeper with yourself. That's true fulfillment. Uh -huh. We're so attached to, I'm fulfilled if I have a happy life with a family and a job and a car and all of these things. No. Yeah. Like right now I have a house, I have the book, I have all of this stuff. Like at the end of the day, if, where can I take this? If it's all gone, am yeah. I fulfilled still? If I am, that's a start. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the point that I'm trying to open up space more for now. Like what is fulfillment if I don't like have it? Do I create it? How do I create it? So it's, it's almost like this existential awakening sort of thing we're like yeah yeah you're, you're 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 seeing the world as it really is and you're you're reconstructing deconstructing beliefs about mm -hmm. who you are what you are and what you want to do um and and I, I say take time for that like that's why I go on a retreat every year mm -hmm. like there's nothing like truly detaching from everything so you can just be and that's where the insight comes. That's amazing. Yeah, I like that. It's that, that whole who are you and as opposed to like, who am I as opposed to what am I? That is such a big difference that it's, it's kind of, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. And you have, I don't know, I think you do have the book with you. Do you want to show us uh, what it looks like? Yeah, yeah here, here it is. There are one, oh, I don't know if you can. Yeah, there. I can see it. It's got a nice cover, yeah. a little gold there. Heal the source and create lasting fulfillment. Live, love, and laugh. You know, we got you know each of the chapters there with you know pictures and it's 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 a you know it's not a big thick book. It's it's a reference guide. It's something that you know even me day to day I'm like okay, am I saying yes to me or what's my lack state or Oh, 
Can I visualize? Can I use my yeah. wind journal to create some more confidence? Uh, so in essence, this is, you know, you use this to practice, um, but you know, best way really, if you want to really dive in to just work with someone, work with a mentor yeah. to yeah. shift those beliefs. If you want to, you want to make a change, uh, you can. Like, you know, it depends how fast you want to do it. You know, how radical right. do you want to do it? Some people want to take years to do it. Or if you're like me, let's go 90 days. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let's get it done. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, now, I do ask this question to everybody. Uh, and that's one of my favorite questions because I learned so much uh, from everybody when I asked this. But it's a, a little girl that asked me this question when she interviewed me once for a school project. And I told her I would ask everybody that I interview. So the question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite question. <laughs> I think I've... I've... I've asked that many times. I've seen so many posts out there. And I, part of me is like, I don't want to use that answer, but that the answer resonates with me the most. And I think it's John Lennon who said, I want to be happy. Mm. Yeah. That's a good one. I think that at the end of the day, that's what we all strive to do. Okay. Uh, but we, we go, you know, the first thing we know, what do you want to do? What do you want to have to be, right? Like, what do you want to be? I'm like, I want to be an astronaut. But that's not a being. That's a doing. That's a having. And being is an emotional state. It's, I want to be fulfilled. I want to feel alive. I want to feel happy. I want to, whatever that means. Yeah. Everybody's different. But to me, I think that's what I'm like, right now, that's what I'm striving to do and if i'm happy then i can help others to do that too exactly if I'm, an, and then if I'm an astronaut i can be help you become an astronaut maybe <laughs> <laughs> no but it's true and happy can change too for you it can mean something at one moment and it'll mean something so there's that continuous it's it's not a flat line and there's room for growth and, and i think that's amazing that's a great answer I love it. That's why I love this question because we get different answers. And at the end of the day, everybody wants the same to be happy, to be loved, to be, you know, mm -hmm. and it starts with you. So that's amazing. Um, now, how can people follow you? Is I know you have a, an, an event coming up for your, and for your book as well. You have a concert on the go, but how can people follow you, contact you if they want to work with you? How can they reach yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. The, the easiest way, healthesource.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Vincent Chang Enterprises, uh, doing some TikTok videos too, but definitely you can reach out through my website and yeah, I've been through you, we're connected. So yeah, uh, yeah happy, you know, answer questions. If you want to work with me, just even talk like it, it's, it's one of these things you, you never know who shows up in your life, but if you feel that resonance, you feel that connection. It's like, I have to talk to this guy, or I like same yeah. how we ended up in the same boot camp of, you know, That's right. like, he, you know, Jerry's, I have to be on this. Right? I didn't true. know him at all. Like yeah. random. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you feel it, follow your gut. And, and this is all about learning. Like you can't mm -hmm. lose when you learn, when you go and seek out more curiosity and, and discover yeah. yourself. So yeah, heal the source. Excellent. I'll put that in. So, yeah. I'll put that information in the description and in the comments as well when uh, when this this airs so people can reach you. And one last thing very quickly before we go, is there any advice or wisdom that you'd like to share you wish you would have had when you were younger? Then you know that that would have made your life a little easier. Is there any kind of advice you would like to share <laughs> to be taught or to be modeled a whole different belief system around being different mm. i really wish that that there was even though there was accommodations made for difference but it was done in a way that really segregated and created still that rejection state um, to have a 
And I think this world is what we're striving for. How mm-hmm. do we accept each other, even though we're different, different religions, different races, different thoughts, different genders, different, all of these things. Yeah. And, and it's, and I think there's a lot more work to be done, but that mm-hmm. to me would, would have changed everything. Like, you know, yeah. that fact that because I'm different, I'm not something wrong. There's not something wrong with me. That's exactly. the association. That's the belief right now. Yeah. Let's oh, you're preaching that. to the choir. Yeah, let's change. That's what I'm working on. <laughs> especially, in, especially in the <laughs> schools. That your your different is your superpower. I was I was tied different as well for the way that I learn and the way that I I behaved. So yeah. And then every child goes through that. So adults can relate. Absolutely. I love that. Let's change that. Everybody that's listening, let's change that. Well, yes. thank you. Thank you so much. And so like I said, I, I could go on forever. Uh, I love talking to you. And it's so nice that we do when we do connect, we kind of kind of uh, catch up and realize we're still kind of going through the same things. It's amazing. So thank you so much. And for everybody listening, uh, make sure again to like, follow or subscribe to that channel. Make sure that you follow Vincent as well with all the amazing work that he does. And uh, until then, everybody stay safe. Stay awesome, and we'll talk soon. Thank you so 